Very much welcome to this side event arranged by the Agency of Participation, a Swedish governmental agency uh, based in Stockholm. And uh, today we have the honor to, to uh, host this side event uh, together with the government of Norway. Uh, the theme is uh, on, um, on the, on, uh, the uh, CRPD as a tool on realizing the Agenda 2030. And uh, my name is Malin Ekman Alden. I'm the Director General of MFD. Uh, and uh, we are very proud and grateful that to have such a such a knowledgeable and um, interesting panel here today. So, um, so uh, I hope uh, I hope that uh, this will be a fruitful uh, event for everybody listening. Also, um, just to uh, I think. To, to, to ensure our, our sustainable development uh, needs both, um, of course, ecological um, aspects. Uh, we need a world that can, can survive and, uh, and uh, flourish also in the future. But uh, to ensure this, uh, the social aspect and the social sustainability is just as important. And the Agenda 2030 or <clears throat> the sustainable development goals are really uh, a very successful uh, process that is in, that in very clearly combining these two perspectives and are also uh, ensuring that all different actors that are need to be working together on, on this um, on sustainability is also included. So this deck, deck document is very powerful. And uh, when it was... Um, declared and decided. Uh, it was also under the theme that a sustainable development of the world also needs everybody to be on board. No one can be left behind. And uh, I think that is a very important statement that is really also taking experience from earlier processes to, to, uh, to, to have a sustainable development that has shown that if that in many cases, big groups of people are actually left behind, are not thought of, or are not uh, not been uh, verbalized within international processes, and uh, that has also been a quite a, quite an important and a key obstacle to actually to to reach the goals that has been set. And among these groups, persons with disabilities uh, are clearly one group that has in in if you look back in in historic in a historic perspective often has been missed out and therefore it's very important also that in this agenda in the sustainable development goal that we are now working towards um, disability is much more a clear perspective than than before and this is because uh, there are more than one billion persons with disabilities in the world and if this uh, large group of women, men, children, elderly people are not included in, in the development work and are not considered as key actors, uh, there will be no sustainable development as a whole. It's, it's, quite, a, it's quite an important group with, that needs to be. And they are also now, as a group, have clearly focused uh, in the agenda. In the general, uh, in the general taste of the agenda, but also in specific goals uh, in key areas that uh, that where disability needs specifically to be considered. And today uh, we are thinking more, not maybe to talk about the agenda as the global instrument it is, but more on implementation. And uh, we are really happy to uh, have uh, presentations both from Sweden and Norway uh, on. Um, how uh, how the uh, agenda uh, can be implemented in like real real real, real life policy uh, of in different ways and um, and as I'm supposed to also introduce the Swedish perspective um, we can there are in Sweden um, there is still an, there is still a need in Sweden to uh, to enforce uh, disability as perspective more 
more clearly within the agenda work as a whole, national work on the national level. Still, uh, there are um, many examples uh, where uh, where it has the disability as perspective has been more and more clarified. Uh, education is one of the areas. Uh, also, in the whole discussion of labour market uh, is another. Uh, we are also very clearly focusing disability as a perspective when we talk about uh, sustainable cities and how to create sustainable environments. Uh, and um, this can be both from the issue of accessibility, but also on social participation and on poverty um, prevention. Uh, that that is part of that kind of concept. So there are many ways uh, that the the government, but also different actors, since we are now trying to to um, to approach the issue of disability, and the general, uh, I mean, the general aspect of disability in how to implement the the disability perspective in the agenda is really what what in the convention of the of persons with disabilities are mentioned as universal design, that the only way to actually in the long run ensure that uh, everybody is on board, also people with disabilities, is to ensure that the society we are creating and building and rebuilding or whatever uh, actually is based on the diversity of needs and possibilities of the population. If we only if we build our societies for only a one group or a, a quite narrow group of of uh, citizens, there will be the the costs to provide the ones that are not on board will be uh, very high, and it will never be a sustainable way of creating a society. So universal design is a key concept that we take from the convention and put straight into the the whole concept of the development goals. And I think that is, at least from a Swedish perspective, something that is more and more realized and increased in, in understanding in when we are working. And obviously, it is not only uh, applying to people with disabilities, but to other marginalized groups and also to quite big groups and, and um, growing groups like, for instance, people in high ages. In, in Sweden, we expect the number of people being uh, more over 80 years in the future will be in 10 years time will be 60 a 60 percent increase to be over 80 would mean for most of us that we would also have new kind of needs and um, and requirements on our community to be able to function and be active uh, and so this is also a big challenge that that uh, is part of this uh, universal design discussion so I will not speak more about that, but um, I will actually start up giving the floor to my uh, fellow nationals uh, that uh, from the uh, from one of one one of a key project in the in the civil society movement that has been actually working with uh, the local and. Uh, national implementation of the agenda from a disability project, a disability perspective. And I'm really happy to introduce Tina Numi Södergren. She's been a, the project manager and she from in Equally Unique, which is uh, a, a collaboration of, uh, of different uh, organizations. And uh, she will also be followed by her colleague, Johanna Söderström. Uh, that has also been part of the work. So please, Tina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Malin. Um, I am the project manager of Equally Unique Academy, and um, we provide an education with a disability perspective on the agenda goals uh, and have a cutting edge competence as well. We link the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the SDGs, to the rights in the Convention, um, the CRPD, the Convention on Rights for Persons with Disabilities. This makes the result sustainable when uh, parallelly implementing the SDGs and the Convention. Um, yes, and here, we find ourselves in Melbourne, Australia, 
on this picture shows a young man that is stage diving on a concert. Um, the, the special thing with this man, but, but you cannot see from the pic picture, is that he is visually impaired. Um, it's not a barrier for him stage diving though. <laughs> Um, and when we come to this, coming to this next picture, we can see the symbol of leaving no one behind that Malin already introduced. Um, and that's the most important promise in the agenda 2030. Uh, and you can see our, in the picture, you can see our globe surrounded with dots symbolizing all human beings globally who shall not be left behind. Uh, coming to the next picture, Equally Unique Academy is a three year project run by the Swedish UN Association and funded by the Swedish Inheritance Fund. Um, three target groups are linked to the project. Um, and um, uh, they are disability organizations, the whole disability movement of Sweden, civil society organizations, and uh, decision makers such as municipalities and um, regions, for example. Uh, educational uh, the, the educational concept is uh, has prioritized free. SDGs. That's goal four, quality education, goal eight, decent work, and goal 10, reduce inequality. We have three lecturers educating on each goal. And now, um, if you take the educational concept for each prioritized goal, we have uh, three scriptures written by Hannah Gardes, a human rights lawyer. Um, they are only available in Swedish though, but in accessible formats, of course, like Braille and easy to read format. Three films accompanies the scriptures. And uh, now we are going to focus a little bit on goal number four, quality education. Here we are going to see the educational film linked to SDGs 4. And they are, of course, also in accessible format, these films. You will meet Sebastian, who's uh, elementary school was inaccessible. The case was brought to court and the final outcome resulted in a positive change. And we'll start the film. Jag heter Saman Baran och föreläser om funktionshinderperspektiv på FNs globala hållbarhetsmål. Den här filmen handlar om mål 4, god utbildning för alla och livslångt lärande. Vi som har en funktionsnedsättning har rätt till en jämställd och inkluderande utbildning som är tillgänglig. Rättigheterna hittar du i konventionen om rättigheter för personer med funktionsnedsättning och i barnkonventionen som blir lag i Sverige år 2020. Jag heter Sebastian Herregård och går första året på lagmansgymnasiet på industri. Och på fritiden håller jag på med simning, parasport och med landslaget. Jag börjar ju på nästegårdsskolan i Kvänum eh, i fyran. Alltså de, de är gammal och så. Inte jätteanpassad, inte alls faktiskt. Men när jag började sexan då, då var det fortfarande de här gamla ramporna. Jag hade ändå gått där i tre år. Och det var ju absolut den sämsta och den värsta rampen jag har sett i hela mitt liv. Ja, jag ramlade ut över den rampen två gånger. Och de sa att ja, vi ska fixa det och lite så, men det hände ingenting. Så att till sist så blev pappa och sa att vi anmäler det här istället. Det var 2000, 
2018 tror jag. Det var det första gången jag skulle in på domstolen för det här. Men det jag tror gjorde stor skillnad för att det skulle synas i media var att det var det första fallet som har prövats i, i, i domstol och sånt. Då. Det kändes skönt när vi, när vi fick rätten på vår sida att de hade gjort fel. Och, och då blev det ju bättre fart. Men det tog väldigt lång tid då också. Men då fick vi ändring på det i alla fall. Så bygg ordentligt från början så blir det nog mycket bättre tror jag. Det är väldigt stor skillnad på om man ser från grundskolan till gymnasiet. Gymnasieskolan överlag är ju helt klart mycket högre klass på industrilokalerna ligger på nederplan och det är ju det är väldigt bra för då kommer jag in överallt och det är stora lokaler och sånt och även klassrummen har vi också på första våningen. Det kändes som att här hör jag hemma lite. Men just nu skulle jag vilja vara liksom industri och vara där i några år. Senare sen om man får försöka göra någonting annat så skulle jag faktiskt kunna tänka mig att bli instruktör inför parasport och vara en, en profil där. Simningen är verkligen någonting som jag kan använda min kropp väldigt bra till och jag har bra förutsättningar. Så det är väldigt roligt. Kroppen blir liksom lättare och kraftfullare. Det är en förändringskänsla. Men såklart simningen är ju absolut det som ger mest energi. Jag tränar just nu fem dagar i veckan. Mitt huvudmål just nu är OS 2024 i Paris. Det är verkligen inget som är omöjligt. Det är bara pannbenet som sätter stopp. All right. I'm, my name is Johanna. And I will talk about having an employment, decent work is both a policy goal in Agenda 2030, as well as a human right. Having an employment positively affects your health, both physical and mental. A lot of studies in which they compare unemployed versus employed people shows that the unemployed feel worse, have more negative stress and a higher risk of becoming chronically ill. As a society, we often say that unemployment is a public health issue. So I lecture, I talk about goal eight, decent work and economic growth. We are uh, three lecturers in this project. It's me, Johanna Söderström. Uh, I'm showing our portraits now on the screen, our three portraits. So the one on the left hand side is me. I'm from the Swedish Youth National Association of the Deaf. In the middle, we have Saman Baram. He's from the Swedish Association of the Visually Impaired Youth. And on the right hand side, we see Marie Louise L Luther, Luther, sorry, <laughs> from the Swedish Asthma and Allergy Association and also the Swedish Disability Rights Federation. Now we'll see if we can... Yes, here we go. Uh, unemployment is usually linked to the state of economy, but that is not the case for people with disabilities. We also, everyone has the right to have a full and productive employment with the wages you can live on. Equal pay for work of equal value. To work wherever you want to and with what you want to. And employer have the, uh, have the demands that you have to adjust and make sure that people with disability could be able to work in same as everybody else, accessible and secure and they cannot disregard um, actions to be taken. So, uh, unemployment, we'll see if we can get a new slide here. 
here we are. So as I said, unemployment is usually linked to the state of economy. Um, but unfortunately, this is not the case for people that have a disability. If we look here in Sweden before the pandemic, we had a quite low, low uh, unemployment rate, 81%. But what was this figure for people with disability that have an, uh, the, the figure for people with disability of their unemployment, it's, it's quite high. And if we look for the, in the historic figures, uh, the last recession here in Sweden, uh, the, the unemployment rate in, in Sweden was quite high, but also we can see that people with disability has still a quite uh, low uh, employment rate. And it doesn't matter if it's a booming economy or a recession, the percentage is unchanged. So us three lectures, we have gained a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge from this project. And we will continue our work once the project is completed. It is vital to understand that including the knowledge and experience of people with disability is a must, since the SDGs are meant to include all. So I'll continue now. And here you can see uh, a piece of art made by Dolk. It's called Wheelchair Lovers. It illustrates goal number 10. And um, here you can see that um, uh, to find out who is absent, ask yourself who is not occupying the empty chair in the room who is absent and ought to be here. In the next picture, Banksy's girl with relief torch should enlighten goal number 11, that is not prioritized by our project, but we work a lot with it. Sub sustainable cities and human settlements. Both goal number 10 and 11 are involved uh, when you discuss housing. Article 9 uh, in the CRPD, accessibility, and Article 19 accompanies uh, those two goals to make it sustainable. In CRPD, um, um, uh, in, no, sorry, in universal, <laughs> uh, universal design shall be used in all constructions, construction work uh, of modern housing. But a lot of buildings that are already there need to become accessible for all kinds of inhabitants. And also sometimes for other use, like you saw in the, the film, the educational film with Sebastian and his school. Um, how to make SDGs sustainable. Focus on the rights and the SDGs when implementing. Principle of leaving no one behind should always be in the focus. Empower people with disabilities. Share, we shall share our competence and skills involve us, nothing about us without us. And then uh, we want to thank you uh, who has been following our lectures. And here is our web address if you want to be in contact. Thank you so much, Tina and Umisad, again, for this presentation. Very, very nicely showing how, uh, how people with disabilities through their organizations or different coalitions uh, are a key actor to, uh, to ensure the, the implementation in practice in, in different countries. And 
I think uh, you, uh, with with your project in the Swedish context, had made a big difference in in highlighting and educating different actors on on the need to ensure that also the perspective of disability is part of the sustainable uh, agenda and this, the work they are carrying out in different fields. And uh, obviously, that's a precondition actually to achieve sustainability in the end. I think uh, as a, a Scandinavian or Nordic country, we are uh, very closely working also with our neighbor countries. We share language uh, to quite a great extent. And I think our communities and societies are, are have many similarities, which may which is a great opportunity actually to um, to also share experience in 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 national and local implementation and uh, in most development work in in uh, disability uh, we are often looking at our nordic neighbors when creating new reforms or trying to solve different problems because we often find both solutions and inspirations that are very useful so uh, if during this side event, we are specifically very happy to be able to work together with the Norwegian government. And uh, also, I think in Norway, uh, a lot of work is carried out uh, within the sustainable development agenda. And uh, today uh, we have the opportunity to have our like sister agency, you may say, Buftir and Mrs. Uh, Kirsti Svina, who will make a short presentation. And after that, I will introduce you also. We have uh, also an introduction on how the, the Norwegian disability organizations have been working in the implementation of the agenda. So, but please start, first we start with Mrs. Kirsti Svina from Buftir. Please take the floor. Hello, my name is Kirsti Svina and I work at the Department of Equality and Universal Design at the Norwegian Directorate for Children, Youth and Family Affairs, which is, as you heard, abbreviated BIFTIR. We at BIFTIR coordinate various sectors' of work on universal design, filling knowledge gaps and advising other government bodies on topics regarding universal design, among other things. The Norwegian government's vision is a society in which everyone can participate. And an important means of achieving this vision is good accessibility in environments that are safe and convenient to use. And as we know, universal design is especially important for people with various kinds of disabilities. In Norway, about 18% of people between the age 15 and 66 state that they have some form of disability. One in three of those over 66 say the same thing. I mean, you'll probably get a disability too if you live long enough. And not making sure that this very large group of people are included, are able to contribute to society in one form or another, is simply not sustainable. Having large groups of people unable to be employees, consumers, caregivers, employers, due to inaccessible environments is not sustainable. We know that some groups of people are facing restrictions and isolation, not just as employers, or employees or students, but also in other aspects of their life, socially, in terms of what they're able to do or where they're able to do it. And yeah, I could be talking about people who are in quarantine or undergoing some other form of restriction due to COVID-19, but I'm not. I'm talking about groups of disabled and elderly people who have experienced these types of limitations in most areas of their life for far longer periods of time than one or two years due to inaccessibility and a lack of universal design. And if COVID has taught us anything, or at least reaffirmed, it's the importance of being able to be social, to engage, to do what you need to do to feel like a participant in society, to feel like you matter. Creating environments that makes people as independent as possible reduces the need for unnecessary assistance and increases the health and quality of life of its residents. Everyone can contribute more to the goals of sustainability when they get to do what they're good at, 
what they're interested in. And society misses out when people are left behind. In order to achieve the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development, we need not only to ask how we can make places of work or schools and universities universally designed, but how we can introduce universally designed environments into all aspects of society. And this is not something we need to do to be nice to disabled people. This is something that will benefit everyone. Universal design is good for everyone. And also the lived experiences, perspectives and know-how that disabled people bring to the table is valuable. And to achieve this goal of a universally designed society in which everyone is included and able to contribute to the best of their ability, there need to be platforms, arenas, and a coordinating effort to make sure that the different parts of the government body work together and different sectors need to work together. The ministries for transportation, education, health, labor and social affairs and culture need to work together with the Ministry of Local Government, Education, Climate and Environment and so on. Local governments and civil society needs to be involved too. Everyone needs to pull together, talk with one another and cooperate at all levels to get universal design on the agenda in all aspects of society. The Norwegian government is working for a more inclusive society using various tools, such as laws, regulations, grants, prices, and competitions. However, the most important tools are those that encourages cooperation. For example, the Government Action Plan for Universal Design, which systematically coordinates our efforts, towards increasing accessibility and building more universally designed society. The fourth action plan for universal design will be launched this June, and it covers most sectors and affect more, most areas of society. The action plan contains many measures, projects, and efforts across sectors such as education, housing, health, labor, transportation, culture, and many more. In the process of developing the action plan, all relevant ministries are involved, both at the state secretary level to ensure political commitment and at various functionary levels to negotiate and discuss which measures, projects, and goals that should be included in the plan. And this is not easy, it's hard. In addition to the government body, civil society and representatives for those who are affected need to be consulted. And also, all the ministries have lots of tasks and areas of work that need and should be prioritized. So, one ministry and directorate, in this case the Ministry of Culture together with Buftir, coordinate the different networks where the negotiations takes place and in the end, we end up with a plan that everyone is committed to. When the plan is agreed upon and launched, a new process takes place, perhaps the most important one. The process of following up what the government has agreed upon. We routinely and continuously coordinate the different sectors, meet up with the various ministries, directorates, and representatives for local governments to discuss how progress will be made and how we will accomplish the different measures and tasks that are put forward in the action plan. This helps to keep universal design on the agenda for all sectors and the different networks that are in place facilitate communication across sectors and across government agencies, all of which is crucial to ensure continuous progress for a more equal society. At the same time, Buftid as a coordinating directorate responsible for equality and universal design, publish and initiates projects and provide grants to research institutions and organizations working within the field of universal design.
We also follow up on municipal and county advisory boards for persons with disabilities and organize several networks, bringing together stakeholders from private and public sectors, municipalities, research institution, institutions, and user organizations. Buftid also makes sure Buftid also worked to make sure that the government has up-to-date information about the level of accessibility in society. And this is hard too, because measuring accessibility is really difficult, not just in terms of the practicality of collecting data, but when is a building society uh, service really universally designed? What's good enough? However, having an action plan and a strategy that challenges us and encourages us to strive for more is helpful, as is the various platforms and arenas of cooperation with civil society, which uh, certainly challenges us to do more. Universal design is not something that each ministry or sector can do individually. It's not something that anyone can do by themselves. We need all the ministries and government agencies working together we need civil society, local municipalities, and research institutes. We need all to include all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kirsti Svina, uh, for this really, uh, really good uh, outline how, from the Norwegian example, how, how uh, universal design is a necessity, but also how it benefits. Uh, the whole building of, of our communities. I think uh, there are a lot of, of knowledge and ex good examples found in, in your strategy that can be useful, I, I suppose, in, in, in many countries. So thank you so much for sharing. And I also think uh, you, you pointed out very clearly the, the need for, to, to achieve sustainability, the, the need for collaboration, but also I would say uh, co-creation um, as as a key key instrument actually to to achieve what you're, we are looking for, and uh, co-creation uh, with the civil society is maybe one also one of the key key instrument within the agenda, but also in development in general. And from the point of CRPD, uh, the need to to work with creation and active involvement is is one of the key points of of the whole convention. Uh, the whole commission is standing on. So I'm really glad now to be able to um, introduce to you uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Terje, Terje, sorry, Terje Andre Olsen. Uh, you are the uh, federation leader on at the, at the Norwegian Association of the Blind. And I think you have also conducted or are conducting a project that very practically are actually working with uh, some of the goals with the agenda in a Norwegian context. So the floor is yours. You're very much welcome. Thank you. I would uh, first of all uh, like to, to thank the Norwegian and Swedish governments for this opportunity to uh, engage with you today on this uh, important and very timely side event on universal design as a tool to realize the Agenda 2030. My name is Terjande Olsen and I'm the president of the Norwegian Association of the Blind and Partially Sighted. My professional background is in computer science and I've worked for uh, the Norwegian Labor and Welfare Administration for 27 years with uh, project management and system development, uh, information security and assistive technology. I'm uh, born visually impaired uh, and uh, that's uh, and, and, and that's not uh, have been uh, any problem for me in my work life. I'm going to uh, to uh, present findings from uh, an ongoing cooperation with two research institutes in Norway, NORS and the, the Norwegian Computing Center. NORS is a new and uh, forward-looking research institute with expertise in a wide, wide range of fields and uh, a strong, uh, uh, strong communities of knowledge. They deliver research and innovation in healthcare, society, uh, energy, climate, the environment, and technology. 
the Norwegian Computer Center, is an independent and non-profit private uh, foundation that carries out contract research for business, the public and private organization, both in Norway and internationally. Norwegian Computer Center's expert teams on universal design or ICT has uh, since 2006 worked on a wide range of aspects related to inclusive technology and accessibility, ranging from health, education and work to web, self-service machines, exhibits, robots, virtual reality and more. Our partnership with the Research Institute and our common uh, project on inclusive technology and universal design is made possible by, uh, by funding from the Norwegian go government, specifically the Norwegian Directorate for Children, Youth and Family Affairs. Uh, their uh, funding schemes are important for strengthening organizations on, of persons with disability and uh, for promoting the rights of persons with disability. Their schemes on universal uh, design are also important to increase knowledge on how universal design technology can enable equality and inclusive society, but also in addressing the barriers and exclusion of persons with disabilities. Our project on inclusive technology is pillared on the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, uh, Articles 4.3 and 33.3, summarized as nothing about us without us. It, this is addressed by the project design, where we, the Norwegian Association of the Blind and Partially Sighted, are equal partners with the research institutes in this research pro project. Today's side event, as well as the findings from our ongoing project, is timely giving the current work on the CFPD committees in their drafting of a new, very important general comment on Article 27, the right to work together with six other organizations of persons with disability, including Umbrella Organization, we have sent our submission to the general uh, discussion that took place in January. We would like to thank the CRPT committee for this transparency and inclusive process. In our submission on Article 27, we suggest, among other, that the upcoming general comment includes measures for state parties to ensure national employment plan towards universally designed workplaces, as well as specific message for individual accommodations. Inspired by the CRPD in South, uh, previous general comment by the CRPD committee and work of the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights uh, we also encourage the CRPD committee to further e explore the relationship between universal design, reasonable um, accommodation, progressive realization, maximum of available resources and violations. For visually impaired person, the possibility to continue at their workplace after loss of sight or to start their career, uh, universal design technology can make the difference. In addition, there are, uh, of course, several other measures that should be taken, both by government and the employer, that uh, are important to ensure workers with disability and equal rights to work. But today, we would like to highlight the importance of equal digital uh, access. Our project with NORS and the Norwegian Computing Center focus on the digital possibilities uh, as well as barriers. From earlier uh, research finding and close interact uh, interactions with our members, we know that digital challenges are increase, uh, increasingly the most significant barrier for blind and partially sighted workers. At the same time, the, today's technology are empowering us at new levels. The, the CRPD highlights the importance of engaging persons with disability in all areas in society. There's also a true uh, for today's digital societies. When de developing new digital solutions, it is important to include users in the design process, including uh, users with disability. 
blind person use the digital solution differently than most others uh, as their user interface are non-visual. Designer will therefore benefit from including blind users in both the design process and as testers of their solution. Our project is a two-year project with three main deliveries. A report summarizing relevant research regarding ICT barriers at the workplace, attitude barriers, prejudice amongst employers, um, conduct studies with blind and partially sighted employers, and uh, we also have conduct case studies with uh, blind and partially sighted employers and employees. Uh, and we have a um, quantitative service, uh, survey amongst the employer. Today, I will present the main findings from the report, which summarizes studies and uh, reports from the last two decades. These are mainly Norwegian reports, and our report is unfortunately only available in Norwegian. One, kind, one key finding is that all uh, the studies and report address similar issues and therefore give a good indication of the status and challenges for blind and partially sighted workers. On the other hand, there is a lack of peer-reviewed re papers to ensure the quality of the work that has been carried out. There is therefore a need for more peer-reviewed research on universal design and access accessibility of digital solution at workplaces. Another key findings is the importance of legislation. The report find an impact, in particular, uh, tailor-made system, ERP and other leg legacy system have poor accessibility. Some video conferences are also not sufficiently accessible. Office suits are in general more uh, accessible, and this may be due to American legislation and its accessibility requirements. With the EU Web Directive and the EU Accessibility Act, the European, com European Community have key legislation promoting equal access to websites and application for public service bodies. The EU Web Directive elevates the standard accessibility requirements for ICT products and services uh, into law enforcement me mechanism. Uh, uh, what are the benefits of this? Universally designed services uh, systems benefits all. We have read studies that compare universally designed with uh, less accessible websites. They find that both users with and without disability has better user experience with the universally designed solutions. In addition, uh, universally designed digital solutions ensure access for all, including persons with disabilities. Standardization and legislation contribute to innovation and improve development methods. With this systematic change, the cost of developing a universally designed solution will be reduced, as it's not a just a one-time investment. Moreover, our uh, report highlights the link between universal design and assistive technology. Digital solutions are not in line with the principle of uh, universal designed uh, may not be accessible for worker who depend on assistive technology. A recent study shows that 29% of blind and partially sighted workers uh, in Norway have resigned from their work due to digital bar barriers. Workers with disability in Norway have the right to get their uh, workplace individually uh, adapted uh, to their accessibility needs. However, uh, our work point out that when digital solutions are not compatible with assistive technology, <coughs> the cost of changing the IT system will most likely be too large a uh, burden for the employer. The challenge of uh, non-compatibility has been addressed by studies and reports since the early 2000s, and it's therefore not a new challenge by adhering to a uh, above mentioned standard on accessibility um, and the interlinked VECAG 2.1, uh, the non-compatibility problems will be solved and uh, workers with disability will be able to carry out their work in the, need, uh, in the needed assistive technology. 
there is a need for systematically address uh, this through uh, legislation, public procurement and increased competence. Especially, we see the need for tools for, uh, to enable public procurement officers and others to both request and check that the product I buy are universally designed and have proper uh, sanctions when these requirements are not met. Other key findings from our uh, report are system are not sufficient tested in combination with assistive technology. Uh, operation staff and end user support uh, lack experience with use of assistive technology. End user training in the use of assistive technology is not sufficient. Employers have little experience with workers with disabilities. There is a need for more competence on how employers better can include workers with disability. Rehabilitation includes new, including new ways of using ICT is necessary for persons who have experienced loss of sight. In our submission to the CRPT committee on Article 27, the right to work, we argue that need for state parties to have in place national employment plans for all, as already recommended by the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights in their General Comment 18. The CRPD's upcoming General Comment on the right to work and employment must give clear guidance on how such national employment plan must be developed in close consultation with disabled uh, people's organizations. They <clears throat> must include measures for universally designed workplaces, as well as measures for individual accommodation. This is further elaborated in our submission, and we will be happy to engage more with the committee members uh, as others on this. We appreciate states' commitments on the, to reach the SDG 8, promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all, target 8.5, emphasize full and productive employment for all women and men, including women and men with disability. State parties must uh, put in place measures with sufficient finance to ensure like equal access to workplaces. Universal design combined with specific measures for individual accommodation is key if we are to reach goal five and its target eight point, goal eight and its target 8.5. At the Scandinavian level, uh, I and many with uh, me at the Norwegian Association of Blind and Partially Sighted are engaging with our government, promoting full realization on CRPD and the SDG agenda. We have high expectation that when the EU Accessibility Act is incorporated into Norwegian law, uh, it will also overall improve Norway's obligation under the CRP. Especially, we expect the private company will be on equal footing as public sector bodies when it comes to accessibility requirement and universal design. And more importantly, that these requirements are compulsory for all ITC, uh, ICT solutions needed at the workplace. Thank you uh, for this opportunity to present our work. Thank you so much, Mr. Olsen. Uh, very interesting and a key area in uh, achieving sustainability is, of, of course, um, the, op the opportunity to participate in in uh, in the labor market and and other ways of ensuring economic uh, welfare for uh, so and uh, as you said also in the beginning uh, uh, the access to labor market is indeed one of the most challenging areas of for persons with disabilities with obviously with dramatic um, results in in uh, high rates of poverty and economic uh, challenges for many many individuals and families. Um, I think uh, it's really interesting to also the point that you are raising as digitalization as a key instrument actually in in ensuring uh, future sustainability. Uh, 
And I think that goes with both if we talk about ec ecological sustainability, but as you are pointing out, also, it's also a key thing to social, to social um, inclusion and social justice. Um, I think if for countries like, like Norway and Sweden and uh, are, that are part of the European region, uh, we are have the, the opportunity that also the regional organization of the European Union is one of the, the um, uh, a key actor in implementation, the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and has been uh, doing that for, for several years. And uh, also the EU, uh, I think, has taken a very important part in actually driving digitalization as a key, uh, key instrument to, uh, to uh, drive the, the development of persons with disabilities within the region. Uh, and uh, I think it's also a key part of, of the strategy uh, that has been, but also the new strategy that has just been adopted by the union. And I'm really happy today to have one of the of the key actors, I would say, in disability policy within the European Union. And um, Mr. Mrs. Imaculada Porero, you've been uh, working very committed and very strongly for many years within disability policy. And uh, I'm really happy you can come here today and also give some perspectives on on development on sustainable development uh, from a European Union point of view. So please take the floor. Yes. Uh, well, thank, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to this uh, very interesting um, uh, side event and uh, with an agenda focusing on the SDGs and the uh, universal, uh, universal design approach. I have to start that when preparing for the, for the presentation, it really uh, reflects on how much the universal design um, approach goes a hand in hand with the objective of the SDGs of leaving no one behind. By its own conceptual framework, universal design is about embracing um, more people uh, in the diversity of people in your design to achieve, uh, to achieve a design that is uh, usable uh, for uh, the maximum number of, of people possible. Um, this uh, universal design approach is really essential uh, when we see uh, uh, solutions or when we try to make solutions or um, needed to address the um, goals uh, where disability, particularly those goals where disability is explicitly mentioned. We're talking about education, employment, reducing inequalities. We're talking about our cities having inclusive and accessible cities, but we are also talking about the data. Uh, as means uh, as reflected in the means of, of um, implementation. When it comes uh, to the to the data uh, on those areas where precisely the um, sustainable development goals uh, called for uh, disability elements, we see that there is a big gap between persons with and without disabilities. Um, when it comes to employment, we are at European level, the average is are 75% um, for persons without disabilities and 50,8% uh, for persons with disabilities. When it comes to education, we see that persons with disabilities are overrepresented in um, early school leaving, 20.3 versus 9.8, but also they are um, uh, overrepresented in, uh, in uh, the risk of poverty. We're talking about 28.4 persons with disabilities are at risk of poverty and social exclusion when we are comparing to 18.4 uh, persons um, without, uh, without disabilities. And that poverty reflects in, in other um, issues relating to, for example, participation and uh, participation in the digital uh, in the digital area. We have to realize, just to give an example, that sixty four point uh, three of persons with disabilities have an internet connection compared to 87.9. So almost 90 percent of persons without disabilities have um, an internet connection, and when it comes to persons with disabilities, is less than 65, 65%. Uh, uh, this also reflects in, a, a, in a, um, 
the um, health situation, but also in satisfying the health needs of persons with disabilities, which are four times um, less met than uh, for persons uh, without uh, without uh, disabilities or participation in um, uh, elections and uh, the democratic democratic uh, democratic uh, processes. Um, I see that uh, those issues are very relevant for the SDGs, and I see that uh, we have aimed to tackle um, those um, issues in the um, just adopted European Disability Strategy. Uh, the strategy was um, adopted on the 3rd of March this year, and it's a combination of disability specific actions. Uh, with actions in which we mainstream disability. And we can really say that we mainstream disability following um, a, a universal design or a design for all approach in which not only do we um, put disability concerns into um, general areas, um, but also we include and incorporate the intersectionality perspective of persons with disabilities, the difference in disabilities, the diversity of disability, but also their, their mutual, multiple, um, multiple um, identities, which is also very important to bring uh, into the picture and also um, issues related to, 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 to gender, issues related to age, uh, because we know that the majority of older people have disabilities and we know that the majority of disabled persons have, uh, are older persons. So this is really very, uh, very important, that perspective. And that perspective matches very well with the universal, as I was saying, with the universal design uh, approach of catering for diversity and uh, for diverse um, uh, users. We, we have a strategy that is um, uh, addressing um, uh, a number of priority areas. We have eight priority areas. Uh, the first one is about accessibility and it aims to create a barrier-free Europe in all kinds of environments. And I will come back to it at the end because I would like to share some reflections uh, with you on, on that. We have an area that deals with enjoying of um, uh, European rights and we talk there about free movement, participation in the democratic democratic processes and of course we have the area of independent living quality of life and living independent and we address there um, issues related to skills but also employment employment as um, an enabler of um, uh, independence uh, not only economic independence but also social uh, independence in relation we have a number of areas in relation to participation and non-discrimination those address access to justice access to health um, and uh, education and these have to be seen from an uh, equal treatment perspective where persons with disabilities as stated in the UNCRPD have the same rights as anybody else to um, participate in these areas and get uh, services that allow them to participate. Now, um, we have a section, a chapter uh, about um, the rights of persons with disabilities globally. There we partner uh, really with um, many uh, organizations to uphold uh, the, the human rights of persons with disabilities in all international relationships in the EU, from development cooperation to humanitarian uh, aid uh, and, uh, and so forth. But, and finally, we have... Um, an area about um, efficient and delivery of the strategy, where we talk about the governance, where we talk about monitoring, um, because those are essential to a company. We're talking about a 10 year strategy in which you need really to keep control of what is being developed, think back and if necessary, adjust the goals and objectives and actions that we have uh, put forward uh, uh, now. Uh, Two final uh, uh, elements or areas. One is about the EU leading by example, and this mainly focuses about uh, on the EU institutions, on the Commission as um, as a public administration, and we're talking about HR policies, but also accessibility policies for um, uh, our employees and the public, the public that in with disabilities that interact with the EU um, institutions in terms of buildings, in terms of digital technologies. And finally, um, the area of awareness raising, governance and measuring um, uh, 
progress, both um, on the strategy itself, but also vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the convention. I said I would go um, uh, back to share uh, some reflections on, um, on accessibility, because um, this concept of, of universal design is so closely interwoven with the concepts of accessibility. Um, a key, uh, accessibility is a key enabler of rights, is a precondition for participating in society, and we need to ensure that accessibility is delivered through a universal design approach to ensure that everybody is able to access on equal basis with others. Let's not forget that accessibility is a tool for achieving the access. It is, it is a tool and universal design is an approach of achieving accessibility. It goes hand in hand with assistive technology because we need to cater for the most common problems, com remove the most common barriers that people face with, it, with disabilities face, but then we also need to make sure that those accessible technologies go hand in hand and operate in a seamless manner with assistive technology and that where necessary, reasonable accommodation is provided to individuals uh, to individuals with disabilities. This is the philosophy and this is the approach that we have in the strategy in relation to accessibility. And we have a number of, of uh, tools uh, and instruments in which we have used that universal design paradigm or approach to deliver on accessibility. The previous speaker had mentioned a couple of the directives, uh, the legislation that we have uh, put in place, I mean, the web directive, but also the public procurement directive to ensure that um, any uh, thing that governments, that public authorities buy should be accessible, shall be accessible for persons with disabilities. And we know that we need to guide what is accessibility? We've seen and we've learned also a lot from the US experience, which uh, as was said also were pioneers on accessibility in many areas, that you need to define accessibility. You need to say what are the obligations, you need to spell it out. And that we have done through the Accessibility Act, but also through uh, the development of standards, accessibility standards in the built environment, in transport, uh, in, um, in ICT, uh, where, and. Uh, the universal design approach is embedded in the fact that we're talking about mainstream technology. How do we make mainstream technology accessible um, uh, for uh, persons with disabilities? And we need to link this with um, our legislation that contains requirements, but these uh, standards provide more, uh, more uh, requirements. And in the legislation itself, we have made very clear that um, interoperability with assistive technology is something that needs to be achieved and delivered, and it will be monitored. So this is really uh, uh, very uh, important uh, all these that all these elements come, uh, come together. Let me say that in the Accessibility Act, we have these elements and we do not have yet the standards that would give presumption of conformity, meaning if you implement the standards, then you are okay with the legislation, if I might simplify um, a, a lot. But uh, as uh, we are talking uh, now, uh, we are transmitting the first draft uh, request, it's a request to the standardization organizations in Europe to deliver standards for the web, for the uh, European Accessibility Act. Those standards, of course, will be uh, built into the uh, uh, built upon the results that we have already achieved um, on uh, the uh, standards on, on uh, the built environment and ICT, but also, and this is very important, also in the um, standards that relate to process-oriented, how to um, pay attention, how to embrace in your organization universal design in order to ensure that the outcome, whether it is a manufacturing of a product or whether you are having a service uh, delivering or you have a process ongoing, how can you make sure by embracing a universal design approach that your result is accessible for persons with, and inclusive of persons with disabilities? Here we have done a standard, there is a, a standard, a European standard that is the result of a mandate of the European Commission to 
the standardization uh, the standardization organizations really essential to have that uh, uh, approach that universal uh, design approach in our organizations to make sure that our outcomes are um, are uh, going to be accessible as i said and inclusive of um, of persons with uh, with disabilities um this is a, and i'm very conscious of time i'm very conscious that we need to um uh, I need to pass the floor to the organizer for closing and maybe hopefully to have some questions from the uh, from the audience. So I would uh, stop uh, uh, here and uh, I remain available in case there are uh, any uh, questions or uh, that I should answer. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Mrs. Pereira. <clears throat> I think you really pointing out the most important thing on uh, on the work on sustainable development is actually not only talking about it but also how actually to ensure that it's happening and obviously also monitoring uh, the result of the work um, and uh, for us uh, acting in the European region uh, I think the legislation initiatives are very uh, very clearly driving also uh, the development on our national agenda. Hopefully, uh, not at least the work of, um, of the standardization that will follow, especially from this new directive, will also be uh, a contribution to, to countries outside the regions that is maybe not a part of the compulsory legislation, but, but that can really benefit because I think the products and the services we are using in this digital society we are living in would be the same, depend, not depending on where in the world we live. So I hope this, uh, and I think this work that will be carried out now and are, is also done within the web, web directive is, is key for also for, uh, for a lot of other countries in the world. So thank you so much for this introduction. Um, we have very few minutes now. Uh, there have been some questions already on uh, actually on the same question. How how are you in, for instance, in Norway, um, working with universal design uh, in the realization? Um, unfortunately, there is not enough time to answer. Maybe you can, if there is time for you, uh, from Buftir or from uh, from Terje from uh, the Association of the Blind to to make some comment on the on the question and answer chat that is an opportunity um otherwise we will um, but uh, i would just like to recognize that we had some some questions on that theme um but um, thank you so much everybody participating in the panel today it's been uh, really interesting and it has really showed the broad concept that the sustainable development agenda is delivering uh, when you also include a, the perspective of disability. And as uh, Ima, Ima said in the end, uh, the, there is a very close link and or it's, it's, really, uh, it's really the same kind of entry point in the convention and in, in the sustainable development goals that sustainability is really requiring um, diversity as, as the ground for, for work. And uh, also when it comes to disability, it's not a single subject, but it's, it's also a, a theme of diversity. There are uh, different needs and opportunities depending on so many factors like gender, gender economical situation, uh, wherever in the world you are acting and so on. So actually diversity also in the field of disability is compulsory to actually achieve uh, good results, I would say. And I think uh, learning from today is really clear. And I also think that the, it's been very interesting to show also the need actually to, to, uh, to work together, uh, different actors, the civil society, uh, especially organizations of persons with disabilities, us as public actors, but obviously also the industry in its, its different capacities. It's uh, working together, uh, forming solutions, uh, monitoring. Uh, we can actually achieve uh, clear and practical results that we need. And um, I think also Mrs. Pereira was really um, lining out how the whole idea of accessibility is, is uh, functioning in the CRPD, but um, 
And uh, at the MFD, we are also trying to do this, as this is one of our key areas in, in our national work. And we like to see it as a triangle where the base is, the broad basis is actually universal design. Uh, but the top is obviously assistive devices and other individual supports that people with disabilities can be need can need. And the top of the triangle will actually be the need for special solutions will actually expand if the if the universal design is not provided in a sufficient way. But if the universal design is really provided and, and used as a concept in practice, also the need for individual support will will uh, be smaller and uh, more precise and uh, both funds and solutions will obviously be be uh, more sufficient for more people in the total so thank you so much for today and also thank you for everybody listening and um, this uh, this web this seminar will be presented on the UN website uh, within the other side events that is taking part during the state party conference uh, we as the Agency for Participation in Sweden will also publish it in a, in a few days in our website where when we have um, ensured that everything is, is accessible in the format. So thank you so much for today and also thank you to interpreters and, uh, and everybody assisting. So thank you and bye bye.